Hallelujah. We give God praise. We thank God Almighty. It's the third day of the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's my pleasure to welcome you again to this fellowship. Let's have a word of prayer as we commence the fellowship. Our Father and our God in heaven, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration. We bow our heads before you. We hallowed your name. We say thank you to you. Gracious Father, be exalted. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be thou exalted, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. It is the hour of fellowship. Among ourselves, we ask that our fellowship will be with you and even with your son, Jesus Christ, by the word of eternal life. Communicate with our hearts. Give us illumination. Grant us your light. Give us your truth. In the name of Jesus, cause us to walk in your love and to walk in your ways. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be your name, Holy Father. Thank you, eternal God. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen in the name of Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We give God praise because the Lord our God is faithful. is the King Most High. I want to welcome you to today's fellowship. This is the third day of the fellowship. I'm asking that the blessings of God be with you. Our participation, may it be together with the Spirit of God, Jesus mighty name. For it is written in the scripture that we are two or three are gathered together in my name. Jesus said, there I am in the midst of them. May the presence of Christ give us consolation. May he give us his love. May the presence of God go with us. Today, we are going to be fellowshipping around tarry ye. To tarry is to sit down. To tarry is to sit. Tarry ye. That's what we are going to be doing. Now that the situation of the world is what it is today, and there is darkness everywhere, difficulty everywhere, problems everywhere. All we need to do is to wait, to wait until the Spirit moves us to act. That's when we do. We wait. Nobody is saying anything. Nobody is doing anything until the Spirit of God moves us. We wait, we keep praying, we keep waiting on God. When the Spirit is poured out on us, then we go forth. The world is troubled. Everywhere is troubled. It is the preparation for the end time. The end of times is almost here. We are very close to the hours of the Antichrist. When the chaos in the whole world goes to the peak, then there will be a need for one world government. There will be a need for one leader who will rule over the entire world. That is the beast, the beast that is from the sea, that has seven, seven heads, which one of the heads is as wounded, but is almost getting healed, recovered from a deadly injury the beast from the sea that's a country that's going to rule over the entire whole world and then the beast from the land will will represent this country one ruler the first prophet who will make an image to the beast and we cause all the nations of the earth to worship the image of the beast, which he had miraculously caused to be able to speak and to be able to talk. You see, everything is going as the scripture has said. And what did the Holy Ghost say to us, which I am reporting to you? 
he said that the reason why the chaos and the calamity will be very pronounced is because many don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will understand, the Holy Spirit will resist, the Holy Spirit will prevent, the Holy Spirit will know how to maneuver one's way. Because people don't have the Holy Ghost, they will run from pillar to post. But as we settle down to fellowship and have interaction, we encourage one another. Glory be to the Lamb of God. A scripture was shared with me on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, if I'm not mistaken, the book of Malachi chapter 3, Malachi 3 and verse number 16. In Malachi 3, 16, this is what God's word says. He was speaking to the priests and then immediately he turned around and began to talk to the faithful. He said, then they that feared the Lord, they speak often one to another. And this is what we must do in our age. This is what we must do in our times. We must speak often to one another. And the Lord hacking. The Lord hacking. Praise God that the Lord hacking. And had it. And a book of remembrance. A memorial, the book of writing, is opened or was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Glory be to the Lamb of God. They so feared the Lord and thought upon his name. Many things we feel the thought of the people in the whole world, but because we think upon the name of the Lord, a book of remembrance is open before us. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Many will think upon so many things. There is a whole lot on the table of the people of the world now. A whole lot to think about, a whole lot. But we have one consideration. We think upon the name of the Lord. And what did the scripture say in verse 17? And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spirit his own son that serveth him. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So there is a provision for rescue, provision for deliverance for the people of God. The people that speak one to another often. Those who um, uh, prepare their thoughts to think upon the name of the Lord, those who fear him, those who discuss God one with another, glory be to the Lamb of God. He will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, not just a son, but a son that serves him. Wonderful. 18. Then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And what will be about this discerning? What is it that will bring about this perception, this, this understanding? What is it that will bring about it? Because in those days, the people that serve God will be spared. Glory be to the Lamb of God. He will make up his edge. Mm. He will execute it. He will perform it. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And praise God forevermore. He will spare them. He will have pity on them. He will have compassion. The word spare is the word to have pity. The word to have compassion. He will have compassion. He will spare them as a man spareth his own son. Have it compassion on his own son that serveth him. Glory be to the Lamb of God. They will not be hurt. They will not be hurt. So brothers and sisters, we are concerned about the situation that is going on everywhere in the whole world. 
but it is not something to discuss. We have something more important, more beneficiary to discuss. If we discuss the economy of the whole world, what would that profit us? If we discuss the situation of individual countries, what would that profit us? But it will profit us a lot if we focus on the name of the Lord. Someone will say, Lord, is that what I'm going to eat? Is that what is going to pay my bills? But the Bible told us that they that thought upon the Lord and speak one another, often to one another, a book of remembrance is written before the Lord concerning them. There is a writing written concerning them. That's what the word of God told us. They that thought upon his name, a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. The Lord had them as they speak one to another often and he hearkened. And he said, they will be mine. The Lord will come true for those who think on him and meditate on his name. Jesus said, how many of you, by taking thought, can add a lifespan unto your life? Because you are taking thought. Can you add a lifespan unto your life? The answer is no. You can't even make a white, white or black. No, you cannot. You cannot. Glory be to the Lamb of God. He said, take no thought for yourself. What you will eat, what you will drink, what you will put on. The Gentiles, they seek after these things. That's the book of Matthew chapter 6. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. He said, sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. Don't take thought about tomorrow. Don't take thought about tomorrow. Hirajaman, Jariba, Hirajaman. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Let's give God praise. He said in all things, give thanks. Let's give God praise. Let's appreciate His name. Go ahead and give God praise. That's the right thing to do. Go ahead and give God praise. Appreciate the name of Him who alone is God. Give God praise. You are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you, we lift our voice and say, You are the Lamb upon the throne. Oh, glory be to your name, Lord. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb. Upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice and say, You are the Lord upon the throne. Focus your heart and your mind on praising God. Focus your heart and your mind on worshiping God. Focus your heart and your mind on extolling the name of the Lord. For the Lord is worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Give Him thanks. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord, invisible God. You are the miracle worker. You are worthy, oh Lord. Abi osi re luluwa. Abi osi re luluwa, abi osi, abi osi, abi osi re luluwa. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. It is a good thing to give God thanks and to bless the name of Him who is the Most High. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is good. His mercy is endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given to Amen.
Now let's pray some intercession prayers. Father, let the doors of the nations be open to the gospel. In this world, there is revelation. Jesus said, in me, you will have peace. John chapter 16 and verse 33. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good shares. I have overcome the world. There are some group of people on there who are commanded to be of good shares. He rise and need He, Maranguro, Prabhupada, Hmm. Hey, a group of people on the earth who are to be of good chairs while the whole world is thrown into chaos in the world you will have tribulation but be of good chairs Heli, Heli, Kaisera Mampakose Gratushel Atakadinwa these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in me, Jesus said that he might have peace. So, in the world, no matter the age or the dispensation, ye shall have tribulation. Ye shall have tribulation. But be of good chairs. I have overcome the world. Let's lift up our voices unto God. So the world need the gospel. That they too may be of good chairs, as many as we receive the gospel. Let's say, Father, let there be the opening of the doors of the nations all over the world unto the gospel, that there will be no one in any race or language or kingdom or nation that will be cut off. In the name of Jesus, let the gospel be accessible. In every nation of the world, go ahead and tell it to God in prayers. The only solution to the problem in the world today is the gospel of Jesus. Is the gospel of Jesus. Everyone must look up to heaven wherein the Messiah will from whence the Messiah will come. From whence the Messiah will come. He said our conversation is in the heavens. Our conversation is in the heavens. Oh, yes, from where come our Savior? The Savior is coming. The Savior is coming. Let the doors of the nations be open, oh God. Let it be open to the gospel. The doors of all the nations be open to the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21. Our conversation is in the heaven from whence also we look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. We look unto God in heaven. We look on to him in heaven. Our conversation is from there. But this knowledge is not in every man. This knowledge is not in every man. Let the doors of the nations be opened that people may have hope, the hope that is in Christ, and that they may have the peace that is in Jesus Christ. That they may be of good chairs. Eli, Keresa, Mabakunkre, Diolo, Mekofri, Sakroni, Edikataya. Who must see Goyo Kunke take a sinish larana? Kreneke Brahaske de Gratushke de Hanagazan. Faina Gonga Yakule Papin de Sakatilitana, Ezakundro Gombrahaka Brigitis and Edictaya. E. Kasasa Nebako, Mimbra Ankos Tilhinis, the Gomban de Klitina Hanski, Fade Bagabina Sosa. I can barahande le koto ni hiyo. I sane bagande yete rande kaske sahara. Eli kara kande kala ni mango brady kade no gulo se rani. What the nations and the people all about the world should do right now is to sit down and discuss God. Is to sit down and discuss God. That's what the nations should do. To sit down and to discuss God. That's what they are required to do. Sitting down to discuss God. That's what they should do. 
Let the doors of the nations be open to the gospel, that they too may rejoice with the elect in the last days, in the days of trouble, in the days of darkness. Oh yes, Ahab was looking everywhere, looking for Elijah. Elijah was enjoying himself in Zarephath with the widow that the Lord has commanded to, to nourish him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One more time, we're going to make intercession before God and say, Father, in Jesus' name, send forth laborers into your vineyard. That's the responsibility of the Holy Ghost. He Rajaman, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the responsibility of the Holy Ghost. The Bible told us, he said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest. In Matthew chapter 9, the last two verses. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest, that he may send laborers into his vineyard. The Lord knows those who are laborers for him. He knows how to prepare laborers. He knows how to make them adequate. Our responsibility is not to rush out to go and fill in the gap. The responsibility of everyone who is conscious that, oh, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Their responsibility is not to rush in and go and fill in the gap. The responsibility of everyone who is conscious of the situation is to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send laborers into his vineyards. He knows the appointed laborers he wants to send. He knows the ordained laborers he wants to send. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be you. The Lord knows whom he has chosen for his work. There are many people upon the sea fishing, but he called Peter. He called James. John came. Andrew came. They are not the only fishermen there. He called those ones. Matthew was not the only one at the task collector booth. He called Matthew. He said, come, follow me. Follow me. One said, I will follow you. He said, no, don't worry. Go back. Horses have holes. Birds have men. But the Son of Man does not have where to lay his head. And another one said, Master, let me go and bury my father. I said, let the dead bury their dead. You come and follow me and let's go and preach the gospel together. Our responsibility, I want to say that again very loud and clear to every believer all over the world, is not to go and fill in the gap. It's to pray. God may make you the answer to your prayer. But you don't have to assume that you are the answer to the prayer. Our responsibility is to pray. Let's say, Father, in the name of Jesus, all over the world, send laborers into this ripe harvest. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and tell it to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, send laborers into the vineyard as you send Paul and Barnabas in the book of Acts chapter 13. The Bible says in Acts chapter 13, beginning from verse 3, he said, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have chosen them to be. And after they have fasted and they have prayed, they lay hands on them and they send them forth. And in verse 5, the Bible says, I've been sent forth by the Holy Ghost, even though the church was the one that sent them forth. I've been sent them forth by the Holy Ghost they departed into Seleucia. They departed, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Acts 13 verse 4. By the Holy Ghost, they departed unto Seleucia. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Father, send laborers, send laborers. There were five prophets and teachers in those days. He chose two out of them. There were five. He didn't send all the five together. No, he did not. He didn't send all the five. He sent two among the five. Three were left in the church in Antioch. Three were left. In verse 1, there were five in number in that church in Antioch. Prophets and teachers. All of them are qualified. In knowledge, they are qualified. In anointing, they are qualified. By grace of God, they are qualified. By position, they are qualified. By experience, they are qualified. They are all ministering unto God in verse 2. They were fasting and praying, ministering unto God. All of them are qualified. But the Lord said, among the five, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have chosen them to do, for the work which I have called them to be. Hirajaman, Jariba, Hirajaman. Separate unto me. Acts 13 and verse number 2 and 3. Separate unto me 
Barnabas and Saul for the work as they ministered unto the Lord. The Holy Ghost said, separate unto me, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work we are unto, I have called them. And there were five that were there. What about the others? What about Niger? What about um, the other brethren there? He said, no, um, we have Barnabas, we have Niger, we have Manian, we have um, Simeon, we have all manners of people, five of them, prophets for that matter, teachers for that matter. But the Lord chose five. The Lord chose five. He chose five from among them. Glory be to the Lamb of God. He chose two, I mean to say, not five. From among the five, says the Father, send forth laborers into all the world in the name of Jesus to preach the gospel in the name of Jesus that peace may come upon many. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Finally, we want to ask God in intercession. Don't forget, brothers and sisters, this is a fellowship. You have the right of participation. Whatever the Lord ministers to you, give it to us in the comment section. And if there is anyone who ought to be here, who is not here right now, share the link to them. Share the link to everyone. Let them know that the fellowship is already at the middle. We are almost running to an end so that they can be part of it quickly. Although many we still have to watch the the rebroadcast, I mean the uploaded one. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So I want to say to God Almighty, and say, Father, the ministers that are already ministering, let the people attend to what they are saying, so that their peace can be on them. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter ten, He said, anywhere you are, you go to say, peace be unto this house. Let your peace rest on them. If there is a son of peace there, your peace will rest on them. If not, your peace will return back to you. If people don't attend to the words of the preachers who preaches the truth in the name of the Lord our Christ, they will never have peace. There is no peace in the world. There is only peace in Christ. And this Christ are ministered by his preachers who are ambassadors for him. Therefore, nobody can have peace, no family can have peace except they receive the gospel that the ministers are preaching. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your mercy, let the people attend to the words of the ministers ministering your truth by the Spirit and in your name, that your spirit, that your peace, rather, may rest on them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Go ahead and tell it to God. Go ahead and tell it to God in prayers. Go ahead and tell it to God in prayers. Let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. If we have anyone who is dedicated to hearing the gospel, let peace rest upon them. The believers and their preachers, they carry peace. The peace according to the knowledge of the truth according to the knowledge of the truth when everyone is troubled all over the world these ones are not troubled because they have a knowledge because they have an understanding let there be peace oh god proliferated everywhere by having mercy on the people to attend to the message of the preachers who preach the gospel of truth oh god in your name and by the holy ghost cause them to attend cause their ears to hear Cause their heart to understand. Cause their eyes to see. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every knee shall bow unto you. And every mouth shall confess unto you. Glory be to your holy name. That your peace may be multiplied upon many. That they may be children of peace. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Let's go into the traditional hymn. You have a comment, you have a word, you have a message, a psalm, a scripture. Give it to us on the comment section. We are live on two platforms. We are live on, 
uh, Facebook and also on the radio. And so on Facebook, use the comment section. On the radio, use the chat section. For those of you on the Mixella radio, glory be to the Lamb of God. So they can have participation together. All over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it should be. All over the world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. All over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, all over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, all over the world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. All over this land, all over this land. The spirit is moving. The spirit is moving all over this land. All over this land. As the prophet said it would be. All over this land. All over this land. Thank you, Lord. There is a mighty revelation of the glory of the lord as the waters covers the sea all over the church all over the church the spirit is moving all over the church all over the church as the prophet said it would be all over the church all over the church Yes, Lord, there is a mighty revelation, oh yes, of the glory of the Lord, as the waters covers the sea, all over us all, all over us all, the Spirit is moving, all over us all, all over us all. As the prophet said it would be all over us, all, all over us, all. There is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, the spirit is moving deep down in my heart deep down in my heart as the prophet said it would be deep down in my heart deep in my heart there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the lord as the waters covers the sea glory be to the lamb of god Tarry ye, Luke 24 and verse 49. Luke 24 and verse 49. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Glory be to the word of God. Tarry ye. This is a message that it is fast, fast decaying, fast disappearing in the churches today. Tarry, wait, wait. And to tarry means to sit down. It means to wait. Do you know that tarry can also mean that you wait doing nothing? Just wait. Don't do anything. Don't do anything at all. Wait. 
tarry ye. The doctrine of tarrying is not in the vocabulary or the dictionary of many believers today. They are so much in a haste. They just want to do something. They just want to do something. Yes, Olusha Lademola that is talking about waiting for the Holy Ghost. After the Holy Ghost has come, we don't need to wait anymore. Who told you that? Who told you that? That's the doctrine of your pastor. That's not the doctrine of the Bible. Who told you that? Once the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you can just go ahead and begin to do everything. Are you the ruler of the Holy Ghost? Many Christians today are the Lord of the Holy Ghost. Not the Holy Ghost is their Lord. They send the Holy Ghost on an assignment. Not the Holy Ghost sending them. You see the, you see the, what do they used to call that in English? Two things that does not align. I forget my figure of speech. Hallelujah. Is, is, is. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. They are the one who tell the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, do this one. Holy Ghost, do that one. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, do this. Holy Ghost, do that. They forgot that every man of God who said one thing or the other in the scriptures, they said it by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. No prophet in the days of old ever opened their mouth to say anything until they have told us and the word of the Lord come unto, came unto me and the spirit of the Lord rested upon soul and the word of God came unto this individual. And then you will see the result. In the church, they never did anything until you hear them say they were filled with the Holy Ghost, even though they have the Holy Spirit. They roll them up. He is a yasa. Fire and a kappa talk in a heat. Zani de tek in a higher gift. Oh, Jerimo Yama. He a manti pasapo wak te rijaji na ingresham. Oh, Garandi is Kesereva. Is Kesereva Rena. I a coquette is so in a glena. Feroman Bacobretti, yes, to sing sign. He, Kaina de Facunse Gohorima. He, a ye shall laugh at Nicosabin. Tarry ye. You may have the Holy Ghost inside of you. That does not say you should do anything. You know, many people they take the step and then they make the Holy Ghost to follow them. They are the one that leads the way. Then the Holy Ghost accompanying them. They say, Holy Spirit, if you don't get up now and go with me, I'm leaving now. You have to follow me now. You have to follow me now. And then the Holy Ghost will be jogging after them. The Holy Ghost will be running after them. Those are Christians of the generations of their own parents, not of the seed of the Most High. And the ones the Holy Ghost will be struggling with, I have not sent you to this country. Say, no, 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 I'm going to that country. You better follow me now. You better follow me now. I'm going to prophesy. Holy Ghost, I have not revealed anything to you about this brother. I said, I'm going to prophesy. Can I prophesy? He said, yes, prophesy. Yes, I have. Then the Holy Ghost will now be racing to put words in their mouth. They say, you know, you did not allow the words of Samuel to fall to the ground. You know what that means at all? Do you know what it means at all in 1 Samuel chapter 3 or chapter 2, there about maybe chapter 3, that the Lord did not allow the words of Samuel to fall to the ground because Samuel will not speak until God has spoken to him. He will not speak. He read your mind. You see Saul asking, uh, Samuel rather, asking Saul to sit down in 1 Samuel chapter 9. He said, sit down here. He was looking for his father's uh, missing animal. He said, they have found it. He said, sit. They are going to stay with me throughout the night. He asked them to bring food. Give him a very big portion. The Bible says because God has told Samuel in his ears, even before Saul came, that he's going to be king. So everything you see Samuel doing was what he has been told previously. But this generation is not like that. Tarrying is not in their dictionary. They don't have that in their dictionary. They move God. They move God. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did not let none of his words fall to the ground, because the Lord was with him. He grew. He will never do anything unto God has spoken to him. He didn't anoint David because he was angry. He was even begging God concerning Saul. 
In 1 Samuel 16, God said, How long will you mourn for Saul? Maybe verse 1 or 2 thereabout. How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing that I've rejected him to be king. I've gone to another person. Fill your horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse. I'll give you, I have somebody that I've chosen. Anoint him as king over Israel. So I can't do that. So I can't do that. The men of old that you are trying to imitate, they don't just go all out doing whatever they like. They don't do that. They do that which the Lord asked them to do. But this time around, it is the men and the ministers, the bishop, maybe because they are apostles in rank. They have the authority over the Holy Ghost. You know, apostles are very great people. You know, but those are false apostles. Arrogant and pride and boastful apostles. They say, don't you know I'm an apostle? I have the authority over the church. And whatever I say is an order. No, sir. It's not whatever you say. Whatever you are asked to say is what becomes an order. Not what you think or what you think of saying. The apostles of the Lord, they warned the people of God. They said, don't be a Lord over the heritage of God. Don't Lord yourself over them. Pray to the Lamb of God. Tarry, brother. Tarry. Just sit still. You, have what, you want to do something by all means? Worship God. Pray to God. Make intercession. But don't be found taking any action in the public, outside, except that the Holy Ghost has commanded you to do that. John in the womb did not leap for joy when her mother, Elizabeth, had the greeting or the salutation of Mary. John didn't leap for joy because John was happy. John was able to leap for joy because John was filled with the Holy Ghost right from her mother's womb. That's Luke one fifteen. That's what the angel said to Zechariah. He said, he shall be great and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from the mother's womb. From the mother's womb, he will be filled with the Holy Ghost from the mother's womb. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from the mother's womb. Glory be to the Lamb of God. In verse 41, the Bible says, it came to pass that when Elizabeth had the salutation of Mary, the babe, that's John in the womb, lived in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Why will John live in the womb? How can John respond to the salutation of Mary? How can she, how can he be in the womb respond? Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost from the mother's womb. You see, even the one inside the womb, a fuetos, knows that the Holy Ghost precedes his action. But not so now. Hallelujah. If we want to rescue ourselves from all manners of things, let's wait. Zechariah did not prophesy until the Holy Ghost moved him. That's verse 67 of Luke chapter 1. He didn't prophesy. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost. And prophesied saying. If you look at the verse 41, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost in verse 2. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And when you say, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, why are you shouting? Look at you here. Look at me here. Why are you screaming? Come down. Bring down your voice. I can hear you. I'm not deaf, you know. Like Rehab Bunke we say. I'm not deaf. Bring down your voice. He cannot, she cannot bring down her voice. Oh my God. Because the Holy Ghost was moving her at that time. And she began to speak with a loud voice. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Zechariah prophesied. Because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You will not see the apostles do anything that is by the... I was saying that to you yesterday. I'm just continuing today in another title. I was showing you the secret of the operations of faith among the fathers. Yesterday, the name of Jesus, that's what I preached. If you have not listened to that, please go to the previous videos and listen to it. You have it on YouTube. And then you have it on Facebook. 
organized for you on YouTube. It's on playlist on YouTube. Organized for you. You have it as Fellowship with the Holy Spirit September edition on YouTube. And then on Facebook, just scroll down. Or uh, is it up or down? Which one is it? Scroll down. It's going to be down. Or is it going up? Okay, you scroll up so that you can see it down, right? Great. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Eli, Irajaman. Jari by Irajaman. Acts 2, chapter, verse 4. And when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and, be, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 4 8. Peter did not respond to the rulers. He didn't say, I have the Spirit of God in me. I have wisdom. I know the Bible. I know the scriptures. I've been preaching since when? I've been preaching since when? Do you know how many miracles I've conducted? Do you know how many things I've done? No. In Acts 4 verse 8, then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them ye rulers of the people and elders of israel verse 9 if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him do this man stand here before you all Completely, completely healed. Peter didn't say that because he knows the scriptures. He said that because the Spirit of God moved him to say those things he said. But we are talkatives in this generation. We talk a lot. We lay hands a lot. In fact, Paul needs to write to Timothy. He said, lay hands on no man suddenly, so that you not partake in their sins. Don't lay hands on anybody hastily. Don't be hasty in laying hands on anyone. If not, you will partake in their iniquity. You will partake in their sins. That's what he said to Timothy in Rajaman in 1st Matthew 5, verse 22. Glory be to the Lamb of Galana. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't say, oh, I like him. He's fervent. He's very close to us. He's this, he's that. He's very useful, very resourceful. And they are ordain you. I ordain you to be this. You are now a deacon. You are now a assistant shepherd, assistant pastor. You are this. No, no, no. Neither be partaker of other man's sin. Keep thyself pure. Don't be moved. Just give me that scripture in, in Amplified Bible. Let me see the way they said it. Let's look at this one. Tarry ye. What am I asking you to do? Are you saying we should just sit down and do nothing? Yes. Sit down and do nothing. Sit down, do nothing. Until the Holy Ghost move you to do something. Because you are not a worker of yourself. We are a worker of the Holy Spirit. The things of the Spirit of God. Do you hear me? Yes, we don't work the things of ourselves, but we work the things of God. First Timothy 5.22, Amplified Bible. Do not be in a hurry. In the laying on of hands, giving the sanction of the church too hastily, in restating a spell of offenders or in ordination in questionable cases. Nor share, nor participate in another man's sin. Keep yourselves pure. Don't be hasty. How will I know when to lay hands on this individual and say, we, we have revoked your excommunication. Come back to the church. Or I ordain you into the service of God. How do I know that the Holy Ghost will move you to do it? Moses never laid hand on Joshua except God told him to do so. It was God who told him to do so. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Yeah. When you bring a case before Moses, he will go and ask God before he comes out to talk to you about it. They don't do anything of themselves. But this generation, oh God. Praise God forevermore. Yeah. Mm. Praise God forevermore. When they want to speak in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spread the word of God with both. You can see the Bible does talk about filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, as if they never had it before. Or as if the one they have had has reduced. To be filled with the Holy Ghost is a term that is used to describe the influence of the Holy Ghost, the move of the Holy Ghost, the inspiration supplied at that instant. It's like a Christian, a born again, who is full of the Spirit of God, who has the Holy Ghost, who is sustained. You don't know that he carries power. You don't know. You don't know. But like a Samson, 
the Spirit of God will not steer them. It's steering. It's steering. It's steering. That steering must be there before you handle or say or do anything. It must be there. When we do this in this age, we'll be free of all manners of insult and ridicule that is going on right now. The media is full of fake miracles, arranging miracles. The media is full of lukewarm Christians. In fact, they are saying church is a scam. You know why? Because you are not filled with the Holy Ghost. And you do your work with mentality. You calculate before you do. Not that you allow the Spirit to move you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Saul did not say anything to Elimas the sorcerer. Of course, he knew that Elimas the sorcerer is a satanist. He knew that he was a satanist, rather. He knew. He ought to have said that, oh, you are a satanist, I bind you, I bind you. He never did that until he was filled with the Holy Ghost. What was he using to preach before? Acts 13, verse 9. What was Paul using to preach before? He was using the Spirit. But when the Spirit called his attention to the case of Elimas the sorcerer, and he said, deal with this guy. Then he turned away from his preaching and dealt with him. He gave him a heavy blow. But Saul, the Bible says, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. You understand what it means to be filled with the Holy Ghost now? Not that the Holy Ghost gives you a full cup of drink. You know, some people, they have five liters Holy Ghost. Some people, they have 10 liters Holy Ghost. Some people, they have 15 liters. Why some people, they have 100 liters Holy Ghost? There's nothing like that. That's not what it means to be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's no half Holy Ghost. To be filled with the Holy Ghost means to be driven by the Holy Ghost. It means to be steered. It means to be inspired. It means to be moved by the Holy Ghost. To be influenced by that's what it means. That's what it means. Glory to the Lamb of God. He was preaching the gospel to the deputy. He was preaching the gospel to the deputy. He was addressing the matter of the kingdom of God to this great man who wanted to hear the word of God. Oh my God, glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Sir Jospolos was enjoying the message and was bringing it forth by the Spirit of God in him, by the Spirit of wisdom at work in him. And then Simon or Elimas the sorcerer was opposing them. He was opposing. He kept opposing. He kept opposing. He withstood them. The Bible says in verse 8, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith, he withstood. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, these are not his words. This, is not, this was not an insult. This was the move of the Spirit taking over his mouth. All full of all subtlety and all mischief, that shout of the devil, thou enemy of all unright of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, in verse eleven, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him. By the hand. Verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord, the power that was at work with him, because he was sent to do it. Remember to the Lamb of God. Tarry ye, brother. Tarry ye. Don't be hasty. Tarry ye. Don't be hasty to open that ministry. Don't be hasty to go out on the public ministry. Don't be hasty to be on Facebook, on Instagram and Twitter. Don't be hasty to say, I go for ordination. Don't be hasty. Let the Spirit move you. Let it be by the Spirit. That your confidence may be in the Spirit. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you do that which only the hand of God permits because you have verified the will of God. Let's look at Exodus 33. 14 to 17. Exodus 33, 14 to 17. A practical example. And then we begin to close from there. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Exodus 33, from verse number 14. 
And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. You remember the story of the children of Israel in the wilderness? Brothers and sisters, you remember that story? The presence of God was always with them. In the pillar of cloud and in the pillar of fire. Pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, it was never removed. Anytime that pillar of cloud and of fire moved, it means that Israel is time for you to move. They will unpack their tent and bring down the tabernacle and then they follow. When it rested for one month, they are there one month. Rested for one year, they are there for one year. Why will God say, my presence shall go with thee when the presence is already in the camp? People can see the presence. The pillar of cloud and fire is there, we can see him. Why are we not saying that presence will go with us? My goodness. My goodness. The spirit within and the spirit upon. That's what I'm talking to you about. The spirit is within you. That spirit will now be upon you. That means it's time to do something. It's time to serve. Glory be to God. You may be playing game and the spirit will, within you will come upon you and say, I need you to step out of the house and do so and so for me right now. And then you say, yes, Lord. And then you rise up and do it. And when people accuse you, why do you do that? You say, I've not imitated anybody. I've not tried to take this honor upon myself. Like I told you yesterday, I have only done what the Holy Ghost asked me to do. That is what we need in our age. Not noisemakers. Not people who are speaking all manners of words. Not dictionary preachers. Not internet preachers. Not Wikipedia preachers. But people who speak because the Spirit of God has moved them to do so. Mm. Verse 15. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Verse 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people had found grace in thy sight? Please pay attention to this. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yeah. go, glory to God. Yeah. So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Those ones, they are moved by their instinct. They are moved by their intellect. They are moved by their education. They are moved by their knowledge which they naturally acquired but i and your people will be separated from all the people of the world if you go with us if your presence carry us if we take a step by the holy ghost and so when you saw joshua and all the entire army walking around the walls of jericho don't mock them the holy ghost asked them to do it but the result they get will prove to you that they are sent by God because wisdom is just part of our children. Hallelujah. Amen. The wall of Jericho came crashing down because they obeyed the voice of the Holy Ghost. They didn't say that we are strong men. We can do it. We can do it. Self-motivation is killing the churches. Self-motivation, competition between denomination and denomination, Rivalry between the mission denomination competition is killing the churches. Let us all return back and go and tarry. Tarry, brother. Tarry, sister. Apostle, please tarry. Evangelist, tarry. Teacher, tarry. Shepherd, pastor, please let's tarry. Self motivation is killing everyone. Because also, so organize the crusade. That means I must do a crusade. Because this one is said, building a, a, an auditorium, I too must build an auditorium. What? Self-motivation. Forms of godliness. Denying the power thereof. Let's go ahead. That's our, separa that's our separation. That's our difference. That's how we become wonderful and marvelous. That's how we are distinguished from the people. I and your people. From everyone. Verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, 
and I know thee by name. Amen. Amen. The opposite of this story is found in the book of Numbers chapter 14 and verse 40 to 45. Numbers 14, 40 to 45. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here. We will go up. Take note of what they are saying. Amen. Amen. We be here. We are already here. We and will go up unto the place which the Lord has promised. For we have seen. 41. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandments of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. This thing will not fly. 42. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, even though the pillar of blood and of fire is there. The Lord is not among you on this business, on this matter of attacking them. That ye be not smitten before your enemies. How many Christians have been disgraced all over the world? How many believers have been disgraced out of a crusade? Disgraced out of a ministry? Disgraced out of a fellowship? Disgraced out of a church? How many so-called church leaders have been disgraced here and there? So that you are not smitten before your enemies, verse 43. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. 44. But they presume, somebody say presume. To presume is to be elated in yourself, to swell up in yourself. You self-motivate. You self-encourage. You add one plus one together. You add two plus two together. You say, I can do it. I can get it done. You strategize in yourself. That is to presume. You self-strategize. You calculated it. You looked at it and said, eh, if I go this way, if I go that way, we should be able to defeat them and so on and so forth. Ah, bah. That's not the way of Christian. That's not the way of the people of God. But they presume to go up onto the hill top. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. You may say, Moses, you're a coward. Was he a coward? Yes, Was Moses a coward? Yes, the Lord said, Don't fight. I'm not sending you to fight. You better turn around and go back to the way of the rest. He was not a coward. 45. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwell in that hill and smote them and discomfited them even unto Homer. We've seen ministers who have gone to evangelism and witches will bind them there. They can't return home or crash their vehicle or destroy their journey or blind them or cripple them or they get home after the crusade they go and die. They say it was an arrow. Let's be moved by the Holy Ghost. Tarry here, brother. Don't do anything until the Lord has asked you to do it. In the anchor scripture, Luke 24, 49, let's go back there. These people have been casting out devils. They have been preaching the gospel. They have been healing the sick. They have been raising the dead according to Matthew chapter 10, according to Luke chapter 10, and also according to Matthew chapter 9. They have been doing all of this. They have been doing all of this. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of Irajaman, Jariba Irajaman. Glory be to the Mark chapter 9. Mark 9. Let's look at Mark 9. And let's look at verse 1. All right, I think I missed the scripture there. I want to go to where he sent the disciples out in the Gospel of Mark. Okay, let's just quickly go to the book of Matthew. I missed that scripture. I can't find it. Matthew chapter 10. Oh, I beg your pardon. It's up to, it's, it ought to be Luke 9, not Mark 9. Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. And let's look at verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Do you see that in your Bible? Yes, sir. And you read that very clearly? What did he do for them? He gave them power and authority over all devils. How many devils? And to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Is that correct? Yes, sir. 
Hallelujah. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. I want to ask you, after they returned from the journey, did God, did Jesus take back the authority and the power he gave them over all devils and to cure disease? Did he take it back? And so why is he telling them to tarry in Luke 24 verse 49? If it were you, you would tell Jesus Christ, don't worry, don't worry, sir. The power you gave us in Luke chapter 9 is still there. You know, we read Luke 24. The one you gave us in Luke 9 is still intact now. Didn't we cure diseases in those days and cast out devils? No devil can resist us now. Do you remember? Don't worry, just we don't have to tarry. We don't have to tarry. Let's go now. We are ready. We are ready. That's self motivation. Tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry, my brother. It's an age long message I'm preaching tonight. Don't take anything into your own hands. Let the Lord move you. The fact that I want to say again, there is a madman in your street does not say that you should go and lay hands on him. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Not all mad men is it that is um, that God wants to heal. Do you hear me? Some people are mad because they are under the judgment of God and they have to remain mad. It's like somebody finding a Nebuchadnezzar in the bush and say, Abba, a human being become an animal and say, Oh, and God said several seasons. Is that not so? Several seasons will pass over you. That's Daniel chapter 4. Seven seasons will pass over you, and here come the born again, the anointed apostle, evangelist, prophet, pastor, and teacher, who said, what are you doing here? I have the power to bind anything or not to be bound in heaven, and the power to lose anything on earth and to be losing heaven. And say, I command you, Nebuchadnezzar, become a human being again. And that's the first season. Will it happen? It will not happen. This is the reason why many are met with all manners of disgrace. All over the places or maybe you met the mechanizer in the fourth season or in the sixth season or 6.9 season not yet seventh season and said nebuchadnezzar turn around and become a human being it will never happen brother because nebuchadnezzar must remain an animal must behave like an animal for several seasons some people say seven years he must be like that so it is not everyone who is sick who is diseased who is dead? You must go and raise up. I said, anybody is dead here? Oh, I must raise up. Ah, the church did not do that. Whatever they attend to is what the Holy Ghost has asked them to do. Glory be to the Lamb of God. When they don't know what to do, they say, go, come back tomorrow. And we ask God. Moses was not shy to do that. Please tarry. Do you hear me? Heli, so that every work we do may give a clear sound that Jesus is indeed alive and the holy ghost may be praised because it is marvelous on our side this is the work of the lord this can only be god let's give god praise as we close this meeting right now give god praise please starry brother please starry give god praise we're about 11 minutes behind schedule give god praise right now give him praise as we close this meeting Please find for me whether we have any comment, every any word, any hymn, any psalm, any scripture. Many may not know this message that is being preached today. Check for me whether we have. While we give God thanks, let's go ahead. Let's check the radio. Any for any chat. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. Tari, my brother. Spend your time in fellowship. Spend your time in fellowship. Spend your time in praising God. Spend your time in listening to God. Don't just go out there setting up ministries and raising churches. We have people who build churches and they close it down again. They say they are coming for a crusade and they cancel it again. Because they are men motivated by their intellect and their mind. And our thoughts are not the thoughts of God. Isaiah 55 already told us that from verse 6 to 8, from verse 8 to 10. From verse 8 to 10. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Every minister of God should tarry and wait on God. Even though that includes you, song minister, don't sing. Don't sing it because it's popular. Everybody now is singing, I this kind God, another one, no deal. And people will be dancing like, like crazy. 
or uh, give me chance, something like that. Is it give me chance or what is that? Uh, is this song give me chance? Uh, give me chance, so oh, I want to praise my God. And there is this other one again. Uh, no be crazy, I they praise my God. That be, must you follow trend? Can't you sing and be led by inspiration? You're not a psalmist at all. You're just a human motivator, crowd motivated, people motivated, money honorable motivated. Let's return back to the gospel and wait on God and speak the things that the Lord has put in our mouth. And when it is over, it is over. Service ends when the spirit is finished. Service ends. Give God thanks. Appreciate his name. Blessed be your name, O God. We thank you. We praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Across all the continents of the world, O God, let your truth be found. And let your peace be multiplied upon your church. And let the world have hope because they embrace the message of your servants whom you have sent according to your way. That we all, O God our Father, may inherit eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the integrity you have vested in the church. It is your own integrity and we shall not be put to shame. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Elisha knew about the farmer. He never said anything or decree and said, by this time tomorrow. He never said that until you moved him to do that. Let us learn to wait on you and speak as an oracle of the Most High God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, brothers and sisters. Tomorrow is another time. We'll be the day for the meeting. We'll hope to see you tomorrow and inform your friends and families and colleagues and let them be aware of this fellowship that we may have this participation together. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Your month is blessed. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 14. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow and have a good night.